any true local is part of the deal, to be honest. We're getting less, the, the local people aren't as plentiful as they used to be, which is a bit sad, but that's inevitable because the jobs aren't there and people have to move elsewhere to work. But yeah, I mean, the deal is, is where you live and it's where you belong. I'm the sixth generation of the Calvert family that's run the blacksmith shop. Uh, which has been in our family for over 200 years. Been working in here ever since I left school, along with the farm, so that's 40 years. Yeah, you feel proud um, that you're still keeping something going that's been in the family for so long. So, yeah, I'll try and keep it going as long as we can, yeah. History isn't just what is recorded in the books. History is about people, lives, experiences. Best history is tangible, the kind we can reach out and feel, that touches us back in some way. The old Smithian gun aside, the Yorkshire Dales has a tale or two to tell. It has barely changed since it opened in 1795. Stephen Calvert, the sixth generation of his family to work as a blacksmith, stands in the very same spot as his ancestors before him. He heats metal in the same furnace and shapes it over the very same anvil. Far above the smithy, a trail threads its way along the steep sides of Gunnerside Gill, connecting the village below to a ghost town of derelict mine buildings. Set in bleak yet beautiful moorland, tunnels stretch deep into the fells for mile upon mile. From the early mining of lead in the Roman times until a heyday and decline in the 17 and 1800s, humans have shaped the landscape of Gunnerside, and with it, their marks have been cast. It would be a hard life, but they wouldn't know any different, and they, they would appreciate the work. And though they weren't paid an awful lot, from what I gather, I don't think it was a bad working wage. And I don't think they worked more than six hour shifts which would be plenty, I would imagine, if you were underground, being wet all the time, work with a pick and a shovel. For a young, fit lad, six hours work in the day would leave him quite a lot of time for leisure, wouldn't it? The world beyond the deeply featured door of the smithy may have changed beyond recognition, but step inside and you'll find the old art of blacksmithing lives on. Stephen works deftly and efficiently as he removes the red-hot metal from the furnace. Each hammer blow has purpose. In so many ways, it is a simple process, but like riding a bike, true skill takes time to master. All the paths on the hillsides were for local people to get to their jobs. So they would be walking to the mines, would become a path. Lead from Swaledale would go all over the country. I mean, lead in them days was a product which was used vastly. But there's nothing there anymore to employ a lot of people, you know? The deal is pretty much all agriculture nowadays. The fells above are quiet. Gone are the miners of Swaledale. 
but their daily journey to and from the tunnels have left a trail for us riders to navigate through the skeletal mine workings and across rolling fellside. Clicking free hubs replace the shouts, singing, chatter and clangs of industry, amplifying the sounds of the past. We as riders can literally follow in the footsteps of history, and in doing so, we keep the stories alive a little longer, just as Stephen does each time he opens the smithy door. Some of the marks we have on the door, we have records of the actual day and year they were made. The WS and Co, if we look through the day books, I think it was made in 1852 on the 9th of April. And we've got a record of it on the door to prove it. The art of blacksmithing, I don't think it's really changed at all. Um, all you need is a fire, a hammer, and an anvil. It's quite intriguing, really, to start with a bit of metal and produce something. The blacksmith of Gunnerside may no longer serve the mines, but his art is very much alive. You never stop learning, do you? 